Thank you to Game Work Create for being a channel partner. Looking for a Kickstarter game you missed or 3D printed minis? Game Work Create has a huge selection available, all at a fair price. Use the link in the description below to check out all that Game Work Create has to offer. What's up, Rockstars? Today I have a great question discussion topic for you guys, and that's around how expensive these board games are, especially on crowdfunding services, especially the all-ins, and how available they are to everyone. Now, as always, a huge shout out to my patrons and YouTube members. It is through their financial support that this channel is possible, and that's so that I can make any video I want about any subject I want, and I don't have to worry about how financially viable it is. I don't have to worry about how much it pleases every single sponsor out there, or how marketable it is, or anything like that. Instead, I can just do the videos that I want to do, work with the people I want to work with, and then just make that for you guys. So if you appreciate the level of independence, especially when critiquing this industry, then there is a link down below to that. Additionally, there's some cool stuff like a very popular Discord. I do game sessions. I'm planning one for Chronicles of Drunagar here just this week, actually. There's giveaways that I get to do. There's polls and all sorts of other fun stuff there. So if you are interested in that in a weekly audio update log, there's a lot there. There is a link down below, and I greatly appreciate your support. But if not, that's fine too. A like on the video or even a comment saying this video was helpful or discussing this important topic means a ton to me, and I greatly appreciate it. Uh, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and uh, blanket statement and then we'll kind of dive in. So this is a big question for not just board games, but just in general. I'm going to focus on board games, this is what this channel does, but in general there are expensive hobbies. There are expensive things that you can, you know, uh, enjoy in life and with disposable income you can do that. Um, we talk a lot about being a very welcoming industry to where, you know, every, we want everybody to be able to enjoy these board games. And uh, we don't typically talk about how expensive these board games are in the first place, though. So, so I'm going to kind of talk about that a little bit and uh, kind of hone in on maybe some, some thoughts that uh, are prevalent, especially with, you know, maybe people who don't have as much to spend as others. But before I dive into that, I want to definitely share my sponsor Skillshare here. They are amazing at their service. They really are. If you didn't know, there is a link down below. First thousand people can get a free premium month trial membership to Skillshare. So for me personally, for instance, I was looking at this Leadership 101 thing and I saw Susie Hun here had the Empowered Presenter for Hesitance and Confidence from Hesitance and Confidence in 10 Steps. And I was like, oh my gosh, I need that. Because believe it or not, and I watched the whole thing, it was like 25 minutes and she had a lot of good points. Believe it or not, I get really shy in person and I need to work on that. It's something that will actually help me in my career, help me in my life, help my future be better. So was definitely interested in that and highly recommend this one too. This was actually really good. She did a good job just getting straight to the point. No beating around the bush. She has a lot of different things you can do, activities, but you can kind of pick and choose how you do those, but really enjoyed this one. And there's, there's just, there's so much more. Now, why I subscribe to this with my own money, why I chose to work with them when all kinds of other companies are saying, hey, we want to sponsor you. And I'm like, no, <laughs> right? It's because this matters. A skill-based job, something that I learned how to do that not everybody can do, changed my life forever. I'll talk about that in a little bit, but Skillshare is a great resource to be able to do that. Whether you want to just learn how to uh, maybe animate or maybe you just want to get more productive. There's stuff on like management classes here. If you want to become a leader or a manager in your workspace, you can hone those skills. You can work on that with people that are focused on teaching others how to do it. This can matter. This is important. This is not your YouTube browsing top 10 1990s video games list by some nerd. This is like real stuff. There's a time and a place for that. And I feel there's a time and a place for that. You want to, you, you've been thinking about writing and thinking about working on that book. Well, here, let's, let's get some writing stuff. Now this is tailored to me. So you're going to see a lot of art stuff here just because of my miniature painting and stuff like that and color theory and whatnot. But you can, you can see that here. It'll tailor to you. I have never searched anything on here and not gotten good results that I was looking at. You just want to learn how to sew. Maybe that's just all you want to do. Um, there you go. It's here. Uh, highly, highly recommended, and it literally costs you nothing. So if you're sitting here thinking, you know, I wish I had a 
a, a skill-based job, or I wish I could work on this skill, or you know what, I could really make a difference if I did this. Click that link below. It costs you nothing. I'm serious. Uh, highly, highly recommended. And so again, you do get that free trial membership. And then again, afterwards, it's actually pretty darn cheap and a great resource to use just throughout th throughout your life. Like every month I'm coming here looking for something or other, I, you know, like something came up or I had an idea and I can just put that on and start learning. So definitely recommend it there. Uh, so thank you Skillshare for the sponsorship. It definitely helps out the channel. And with that, let's go ahead and now discuss money, <laughs> right? I think that's important. So food for thought, uh, a little bit of life story. This will matter. I'll make a point from this later. Um, I have been poor really poor. There was a time in my life where I didn't have a home. We were looking at shelters. Uh, and if you didn't know, shelters are mostly for women and children. So I would have been on the streets. It was not a good time in my life. There's been some serious times where I just did not have money to spend on hobbies or anything of the sort. Now, you don't have to be that far off to be in any kind of situation, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm picking a specific point in my life to share something with you. Um, I was going to college full time, like 17 to 19 credit hours a semester. I was working part time at retail as a cashier or a stalker, you know, wh wh whatever I could get. Right. So not making a lot of money, didn't have any skills for a skill based job, uh, raising a family. We had to raise a family early. There was only a limited time we could have children. So if we wanted our own children in our lives, we had to do it early. So we, we made a decision to have children. I made the decision to go to college and I made the decision to then work part time, which meant we did not have a lot of money. To the point where once I was making only nine thousand a year, uh, raising a family. So we we were we were poor off, um, and uh, so we were on like food stamps and stuff like that. Uh, definitely uh, struggling, right? And then the food stamps never even lasted anyway. There was a time where a church got together and gave us a lot of food, and that was very helpful, of course. And in fact, it was the one time where we actually had extra food stamps where we were able to feed our children and have dinner ourselves. Not, that didn't happen all the time. Often I could only afford two meals a day for us, um, my, my wife and I. And uh, uh, so we, we had this this surplus of food stamps. And, you know, we, we did we didn't go on like dates, like traditional dates, because that costs money. Right. So we like went to parks and walked around. So you, you find ways to enjoy each other's company in, in a free way without spending money. Um, but we decided to go get some steak and have a steak dinner. We dimmed the lights. It was great. It was wonderful as a dinner. Um, and the looks I got when we paid for those steaks with food stamps, I will never forget the, the, the tonal shift of people around us when that happened, uh, was, was marked. Like it was, it was impressive. Um, so, we, we finally had some extra money and we went and got steak. And by the way, I had never had steak in my life before. Like this, I was not in an upbringing where we were able just to have steak as dinner. Like that was not a thing. So it was literally my even first time in my life as an adult having steak. So we bought two New York strips and we cooked them on a, on a pan on our stove. And we, again, we did the lights. We even lit candles. It was, it was a great date. I have fond memories of it, but I do remember we were in line and we were at the store and we, you know, they, they scan for it and we pull out our food stamps card and instantly the cashier changed how they were interacting with us. Instantly, I heard literal murmurs behind us from people uh, who were kind of waiting uh, on us to check out. And I, I understand the perception that perhaps there's bad life choices happening there. You know, they didn't know I was going to college full time. They didn't know that because life isn't fair. We had to have children early in our lives. You know, they, they didn't know that we, we had had a donation. And so for the first time, instead of going hungry, we we're able to actually kind of enjoy something together. That's nice. Um, they didn't know that throughout my whole life, I had never even had steak because that was just too expensive. Um, they didn't know all of that. So I'm not saying you need to assume all that. And by and large, that may, I may be an exception there. Um, but the fundamental idea here is that I, I don't think, again, my personal opinion here, it's wrong for somebody to enjoy steak. Now let's replace steak with board games and let's replace as poor as I was with somebody who can afford a little bit, but not a lot. Okay. So is it our stance that if you can't afford 
to drop down $400, $600 for an all-in. You just don't get the all-in. What I mean by that is if there's a way to have somebody who normally doesn't have that just sitting in their bank to drop down, like I do, like maybe you do or something like that. You know, I have dedicated funds from Patreon to buy these things for you guys so that I can cover them and you know, show them off and review them and all this kind of stuff. So like we, we, we are all in a place where we can participate in this expensive hobby, but not everybody might be able to. Does that mean they just don't get to? Um, I, I wasn't able to enjoy board games because I couldn't afford them before. And, and I, I, I understand that an all in is an all in and I get that. Oh, you don't need an all in. Um, but if Chronicles of Drungar, for instance, is their stake, if that's like their, you know what, we have a chance to do this, we'd be able to get this and then play it for free forever, right? Or, or this calls to me like it's the best thing ever and this is my stake. Um, is that wrong of them to get that stake? Is it wrong of them to do that? Now, I know that you can go ahead and just do core pledge, right? And then just add expansions, but typically all ins come at a discount. So is it fair to say that if you can't afford to spend hundreds of dollars up front, that you have to pay more? Uh, is, 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 is that our stance? Um, yeah, it, it's, it, it's a tough one, but I honestly think that there are, uh, people that want to experience these really, really great games and these games that they spend time with their family and friends um, is, is something that should be encouraged. Now, should we be cautious about payment plans? Yes, of course. We should definitely be on the lookout for abuse of them. We should definitely be on the lookout for trends in the industry and all that kind of stuff. And you, you, you guys know I'll do that. But I wanted to make a big point because I've been on the other side of the fence where if I was to play Chronicles of Drunagar at all, I would need a payment plan uh, of some kind or I just couldn't play. And I don't want to say, if you can't afford it, then you just can't get it. You don't get an option. And of course, it could just be an option. Maybe I just don't want to drop down, you know, hundreds of dollars. And I'd rather just, you know, pay on a payment plan. That's certainly possible. It's more easy to budget, right? Um, so, yeah, anyway, just wanted to bring that up. and wanted to have that discussion with you. Because we are in an industry, in a hobby that is quite expensive. At least in the stuff that I cover, right? You can get some cheaper party game stuff like that. But I don't, I don't. That's not what drives me. What drives me is, you know, these kind of cool cooperative dungeon crawls or these big skirmish games or whatever it is that I can spend hours on with my friends and family and just enjoy their company, enjoy the day with them, actually interacting with them and doing things with them. So um, I am glad that I'm blessed enough to be able to afford these and have these. And I hope that this move by Creative Game Studios to allow that allows more people to experience the joy that I have when I play board games with those that I care about. I would love to hear your thoughts about this. Thank you for being a Mature Bunch too. I shared some pretty personal stuff here and I greatly appreciate the respect that you guys give others. So thank you so much for that. With that, I'll let you guys go. Take care.